So some of you know about, uh, well, actually, again, talked yesterday um, uh, about uh, his optimization and uh, and hashcat going at a. Uh, um, at one password, let me just uh, get to this. I know that we kind of got a little behind schedule. Uh, one password is a is a password management um, product. Uh, back in 2005, our founders, Dave and Peter, basically Dave and Rusko, uh, basically said, "Hey, you know, it'd be kind of cool to use the OS10 keychain to have a form filler and password manager." Um, things have changed a lot since then, and uh, it's a uh, very popular uh, password management system uh, across a number of platforms, and we really, really will get fully to Android at some point. At some point, not, you know, way, way, way down there, right? Okay, anyway. Um, Couple design principles. I'm not trying to go into a sales pitch. I'm just talking about some design principles or attitudes we take that are relevant uh, for us to come. So uh, we know that people's data will get stolen. People's computers would get stolen. Things will get stolen off of uh, 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 Dropbox. So we actually started using PBKDF2 before it was cool. Um, so actually, I guess we started using it as a manager in 2007. Uh, we are also willing to say no to certain feature requests, um, like keep things simple. So uh, no, we don't have an option for a cascade of, uh, of encryption of things like that. Uh, we're not open source. Uh, it just doesn't work with our business, but we appreciate the value of open source and security, so uh, we have been trying to document the details of our data format, what we do, the security aspects of it, um, and most relevantly, uh, so we're designers in here this year, but uh, you know, um, when uh, when the John people were first looking at one password, uh, they questioned about our data format. We were very happy to give them samples and work through things. And uh, we also really want to bring good, top notch security to non security people. Uh, so we just want everybody to be able to have uh, good security. Um, okay, my personal history is unimportant, uh, but one main crucial point is that um, while in facing the public, I may be the face of our crypto and security team, it's, I, our, some of our developers are, actually our developers are way smaller Okay. Um, the original version of one password used the OS10 keychain. Uh, I won't talk about why we moved away from that. Uh, from 2007 to 2009, we transitioned to the Agile keychain format. That's the format that is out there that pretty much everybody is using. Um, and we are beginning the transition now to our successive format. Uh, one password for cloud keychain format, which we really need a better name for. Um, but what's relevant for this talk is the Agile keychain format. Um, and so just briefly, key derivation in it. Um, master password is taken in the screen, but we just treat the octets. We don't care about the encoding, which is why if you put in something it's encoded one way on one machine and one way on another machine, your password will match. Um, and we use TBKDS2 HMAC SHA1 to derive uh, 256 bits, and that is split um, for 128 bits as an AES key and uh, 128 bits for an initialization vendor. Uh, get back to why that's significant. Um, 
that derived key, um, and I think it's used to decrypt uh, uh, a kilobyte of, da of data um, that's encrypted in CBC mode with our standard PKCS7 padding. Um, and all of the other steps in key derivation are entirely irrelevant for crackers because you only need to get up there. Okay. Um, so one day I'm probably planning on writing a blog post about authentication passwords versus encryption passwords, something like that. And this is what I'm reading with. Um, support edit to crack one password. OCL hash tag plus 100% computed on GPU plus I found an exploitable design flaw. Um, and a link to the discussion. So, um, you know, we've heard people say, oh, they've discovered a flaw when they haven't. Um, and then, you know, when I go there, I start hearing things about 3 million guesses per second. So it's like not only are we start getting tech headlines and retweets and stuff like this, a design flaw in one password allows for 3 million guesses per second. Um, you know, this is, this, is, this is something that we have to pay attention to. And I should say that against I, I hope I'm pronouncing your name. Yes, that's fine. Reason yeah. post. I could just say Adam. Okay. Um, Adam's post was extremely clear and complete, and there were really four points to it. Um, uh, there's a speed up that you I'll, well, actually, I'll skip this later. Um, uh, the AES decryption or testing a key requires only taking a look at the last two blocks of the encrypted data, checking the padding. The design flaw thing, this weird PBKDF2 stuff that I'll talk about later, and the three million guesses per second. Um, okay. Now, uh, um, uh, one of the things that Adam pointed out was that there's a PBKDF2 optimization. Um, and I think everybody's familiar with that. We talked about it yesterday, so I'm going to skip this slide. Um, uh, the uh, actually testing a particular key, you don't need the real ID of the initial addition vector for the whole block. You just take the second to last block and you, um, as the IV, uh, test a key on um, decrypting the last block, check the padding, and so uh, two points of this is that uh, verifying a key it can be done quickly, and you don't actually need the real initialization vector. You only need that uh, second to last block. Okay. Um, now, this PBKDF2 weirdness, this is this was um, really confusing for me. Um, under peculiar circumstances, a defendant must perform twice as many HMAX as the attacker. Um, and the circumstances involve situations. This is this is neither necessary. They, what's up there isn't sufficient, it has there's more detail, but um, if you are requesting more bits than the hash that you gave it for HMAC, um, PBKDF2 kind of goes off in another direction. And uh, the first portion of the PBKDF2 output doesn't depend on any of the computation necessary to get the second um, portion. But again, let's talk about that. And so what's relevant here is that we were asking for 256 bits, um, calling this with SHA-1, which gives 160. We were using um, uh, the first half of that for the key. The other half was for an IV, which we've already mentioned is not actually needed to test the key. 
Um, and so we have this, this issue. Now, there was some confusion. There's a lot of confusion but on my part. Anyway, performing all of these optimizations plus using a GPU um, uh, led to ports of, of, three, of approximately 3 million guesses per second. And I don't know what Jeremy has to say about whether he's, you know, given that a shot on, on some other hardware, but um, that, that that 3 million has been popped by now. I was expecting somebody here to report. Also, the thing is, if you open, so. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it was a, right. So, you know, it scales to more GPUs. Okay. So, now, my first response to that, to, to that post on the forum thing was relatively quick, and it was extremely well received. I mean, Twitter and Hacker News was just filled with comments like, oh, you know, uh, Jeff Goldberg really knows how to respond to a it was, it was It was weird. I mean, it was, it was weird. And most importantly, that first response that I made was just completely wrong. <laughs> you know, Almost, every, I mean, okay, it's not that it was factually incorrect, but I was addressing a question that was never raised. I just saw CBC, I, you know, I didn't quite get all the other stuff. I saw CBC uh, padding, and I thought it was all about, um, I, I, I just somehow, I've been working on authenticated encryption, so I thought it was about, um, uh, heading articles. So my initial response was extremely well received and just so completely off base through what was going on. Uh, public perception was fine. However, throughout that very long day, with a lot of help from a lot from many of the people in this room, I finally began to understand what was going on. And fortunately, I was kind of like shielded by my colleagues from the onslaught of queries that we were getting about this, so I could kind of get my head together. Um, and so eventually wrote an article with kind of like eventual responses to this. Thing, to this. Um, one point is that uh, some of the optimizations that I uh, am supported, particularly the decomposing of PBKDF2 in the HMAC uh, uh, is available to the defender as well as to the attacker. And, um, uh, okay, um, oops, and I'm talking about a different slide than I actually have. Okay, um, the, uh, um, uh, so the attack on the, or, or the speed up used for the CBC mode padding, I um, said I responded to the wrong thing, but I don't think that it's a problem that that's fast. It's not the job of AES decryption to slow things down for the attacker. That is the job of PBKDF2, so I'm not particularly worried about that. Uh, uh, speed up. Um, however, we're using a different padding scheme in our next format, which incidentally will prevent that. But, uh, however, what's relevant about this is that it meant that Jens did not need the, the IV that was supposed to be derived by PPKDF2 so we could only so we only had to get the first half back. Okay. Uh, now the HMAC unpacking thing, as I said before in the wrong slide, uh, this is something that's available to the defender. This optimization is available to the defenders, to the attacker, and as far as I know, and I don't even know if this is true of OpenSSL today. I think that it's only open S the only the OpenSSL implementation of PDKDF2 that does not make use of this optimization. It's not that I've done a survey of these, but I've asked around. Um, we're under a non-disclosure agreement with Apple, so I can't tell you what they told us in response to this query. 
but I can tell you that we're still happy to use common crypto uh, called the ADF2. Okay, now those were the easy ones. The hard ones were, were we actually doing something wrong with, PBK, with calling PBKDF2? And what, and I think even the bigger question is what can we do or tell our users about 3 million guesses per second? Um, now, this is from the specification for PBKDF2. Uh, one might derive a set of, I, I should actually thank Marsh for highlighting this um, for me. One might derive a set of keys with a single application of a key derivation function. Um, the keys uh, in the set could be obtained as substrings of the output. So that's one thing we did. And the whole point of PBKDF2 over PBKDF1 is that you can actually use outputs. Um, you can actually request more bits than are in your hash function. So I think this is arguably a bug in PBKDF2. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yes. Um, so my next slide. So, so I'm saying is that yes, we use this according to uh, the specification, um, and they said it's not really whether you win or lose in terms of a design flaw, but how you lay the blame. <laughs> and so, yes, it's a design flaw in PPKDF2. We used it according to specification. Um, it still doesn't matter for our users. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I'm calling this a design flaw in PPKDF2, but we got beaten by it. Um, so, and just point out on this one, it's a one bit speed up. That is, uh, uh, the attacker, given these circumstances, has to do half of the compressions that, uh, that the defendant does. Okay. Um, now, when we first wrote about PPKDF2 ages ago, um, and, you know, I do people reading this never heard about it. Um, I call it peanut butter keeps dogs friendly too. Um, you know, this was, you know, some new life for it. So I can tell you by the end of this day, I wanted to change that to uh, people's babies keep dingoes fed too. Uh, you know, <laughs> uh, anyway, um, so when we first wrote about it, said, oh, well, it reduces what would be millions of guesses per second to just a few thousand per second. Um, and, you know, as defenders, we have to acknowledge, you know, what you guys are doing. And by we, I mean everybody who has to protect high value human usable uh, passwords human usable passwords. And of course, um, I have to say, for the passwords that humans don't have to remember, use a password manager. You know, if I've got just lowercase, if I've got random lowercase letters, 23 of them, that's already 128 bits. You know, that's just, you know, um, don't need to remember. Anyway, but, your one password master password is something you need to remember. Okay, so um, a couple of things. One is that the sample that Jens used had 1,000 PBKDF2 iterations. Um, so just because JTI used 1,000 iterations. Exactly. And, and they did two and one password, and uh, that was in the documentation for the Agile Keychain format even though we've been tinkering with the format since that documentation came out. So yes, it's fine to use 1,000. There are agile keychain data sets out there with 1,000 if people created a keychain many, many years ago. Uh, since then, 
it's complicated by different versions, um, it's a minimum of 10,000. So on that hardware, I think uh, 300,000 guesses per second. Um, and it's, again, versioning and updating things is kind of complicated. Okay. Um, so there are limits to simply raising the number of PBKDF2 iterations. Um, the strength of doing so rises linearly with the, uh, with the number of iterations. And um, I think I, about Bob mentioned that the, uh, um, uh, that he thought the defender had the advantage here. Um, but in our case with a password manager, um, the defendant does not have that kind of advantage because um, the defender has to be able to run these on their handheld portable device. So there really are limits to what uh, we can do on that. Um, now, we, this didn't stop people writing to us asking for more PDKDF2 iterations or asking to make that configurable. Uh, user setable, and we said no. We're not going to make that user configurable. And as I told you, those design principles that I mentioned earlier are relevant. We do say no because we simply don't want people to uh, shoot themselves in the foot. You know that if you say, here's an advanced feature for advanced users where you can configure your PDKDF2 things, and this is stronger. People are going to set them to 100,000 or 200,000 or whatever. You know, I mean, they're just... Anyway, uh, so we try to remind people uh, that adding a single randomly chosen digit to the end of their password and telling that to the world, say, okay, I've got a password, I'm going to just randomly get a number between zero digits, between zero and nine, <coughs> stick it at the end of my password. The rules are just one rule. That one rule, yeah. that one rule is, is it, it multiplies the number of cats by a factor of 10. But one, one rule is one. You still have to do 10 guesses. Uh, one. You only have to do one guess with that one rule? Yeah, so one rule and one more guess. Right, but if it's adding a number, then you increase the key space by a factor of 10. That's right. But not 20, no, 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 sorry, sorry, hear what I'm saying, sorry. Uh, so adding a single digit to the end um, uh, multiplies the potential, you know, you know, the key space by a factor of 10, which gives you the equivalent of as much strength of going from 20,000 PBK iterations to 200,000. No, not in bits, in iterations. It's a factor of 10. Sorry, here I'm multiplying the number of PBKDF2 iterations by 10. So, remember, the, 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 the amount of strength or value that you get from PBKDF2 iterations is, goes up linearly. So, uh, so simply adding a, simply multiplying the key space by 10 gets you as much strength as increasing your PBKDF2 iterations tenfold. And that's an example of how you tenfold. Okay. Um, uh, how much time do I have left? I'll give you five. Okay. Um, Okay, uh, we're always looking for alternatives to PDKDF2. I'm not going to talk about why we're not using uh, S script. I think that uh, Jean Pierre actually did a pretty good job of that yesterday. Uh, so we're just waiting for the results of that after hashing um, competition. Uh, so, really, at the moment, in the short term, is we have to get people to use better master passwords. Um, and um, uh, another option is to just try to protect people's data from capture in the first place. You can't crack it if you can't get it. Unfortunately, there's 
not a whole lot of scope we can do there. Um, one option is that we can offer key splitting. Um, your, uh, you know, the eventual derived key that you get has to be XORed with something you keep in your pocket um, in order to actually uh, decrypt stuff. Um, and I basically, uh, the potential for catastrophic data loss with that is just awful. Um, and I'd say that for every customer service request that we have co coming in that says, somebody stole my computer, somebody stole my data, what should I do? For every one of those, we get about 50, I forgot my master password. <laughs> so, Really, key splitting is, 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 I just really worried about extension levels. Okay, um, we do have greater resistance <coughs> coming up in this format that we're transitioning to. Um, uh, we're actually using a Y hash, uh, SHA 512, to get 512 bits of data so we don't have that weird PBKDF2 weirdness. Also using SHA-512 should make things a little harder for you to get those things working on GPUs. On current GPUs. We'll see. I mean, we're coping. This isn't, we didn't design this with the intent. This actually was designed beforehand. We'll, we'll see what you can get on GPUs with that. And I look forward to finding out what you can do. Uh, we're not using PK, we're not using that padding um, because the newer versions of one password will have higher minimum requirements for operating systems and therefore provide hardware. We can set higher iterations. Um, and uh, the new format uh, will make it easier for us to drop in a replacement for PBKDF2 when something like that comes available. And really it's just, you know, about getting people to understand that their master passwords are strong, are, need to be strong, and that is where what you guys do really helps us, you know. Showing the world and showing us how, how these things can be tracked is the best way we can communicate to our customers the importance of getting strong master passwords. Thank you.